Misa wanted to see some good VFX. Woo! <laughs> the boulder exploded before it touched it. Boom! <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of VFX Artists React. Today, the prequels. Oh boy, what a time for Star Wars. When George Lucas gave it his one last good hurrah, and then got kind of depressed and sold the franchise to Disney. You might be thinking we're gonna be bashing on these movies because everyone loves to hate the prequels, but here's the thing. The prequels had some revolutionary visual effects shots, and I wanna see whether or not they still stack up today. So let's look at some shots. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now this is pod racing. This scene got me so hyped. This is a sick scene. Yeah, this looks incredible. Sort of this yeah, looks this so great. good. It's really good. The, like the 3D rendering here is out of this world. Isn't this the same kid from uh, Jingle All the Way? I don't know. I think it's the same kid I from Jingle so. All the Way. I'm I think, pretty sure I, it's not. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm willing to bet you $10 it's not. Jamie! It's Jamie, dude. They did projection mapping for, for oh a lot God. of this pod racing scene. It was like literally two guys did 70% of all the backgrounds for this entire really? scene. Wow. And they basically just took a lot of pictures of you know arches and stuff like that, and they projected it onto 3D models. And that allowed them to have very realistic looking environments that you're able to put the camera anywhere you want to. Another really cool thing about the scene is the motion blur. This is a full, physically accurate motion blur render. And the reason you can tell is because the ground is blurred, but the, the shadows are not blurred. You see them moving and over like the bumps and stuff like that, and they get motion blur from that motion, but the shadows are technically moving at the same speed as the camera. So there's no directional motion blur on the shadows. Whereas you're getting directional motion blur on the ground that they're on top of. Oh. It's such a great example of people achieving good looking motion blur in CG, which is very hard to do. Dude, that shot looks so good. The mirage. Oh, they no. had the mirage back, effect in back. that. The mirage effect is basically the heat of the ground gets hot enough that it actually starts kind of acting like a reflective mirror. And it's such a hard <clears> thing <throat> to simulate. You just gotta have be an artist about it. Even now, there's not a shader you can just turn on for mirage effect. That looks so good, that yeah. shot, dude. They spent a lot of time on the sequence, that's for sure. That is, a, that is a crowd manipulation shot, though. You can kind of see it's a little, like, odd-looking. It's the same people copied and pasted multiple exactly. times. Let's see if you can find the same costumes. You got, uh, you got robe person with a belt. <laughs> that guy just straight up got duplicated. Oh, whoa. whoa! I love these crashes. Whoa, that was, I think that's all computer generated. Like, the way it crumbles? Way, yeah, it crumbles. The boulder exploded before it touched it. Wait, go back? Boom! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> whoa. That's funny, dude. How do you think they did that then? Do you think that was an actual filmed element of an explosion that was tracked in? No, I no, think it's CG. No, those look like CG smoke those trails definitely there. CG yeah, smoke definitely. trails. God, that looks so good though. Those pieces, man. The How do they get those pieces? The physics looks so good. That's the thing. The motion of everything makes sense. It hits that, it starts spinning that way, then it hits the ground and it starts spinning the other way. That's crazy. Okay. Welcome to the Jar Jar Binks section oh, of this episode. <laughs> guys, Jar this is, Jar guys, Binks. This is the... Uh, Misa wanted to see some good VFX. Did you expect us to react violently against the Jar Jar Binks part of this episode? Guess what? Jar Jar Binks is actually pretty well done. As far as visual effects go, Jar Jar Binks is kind of a masterclass for 1999. This was the first time you ever had a fully computer-generated character interacting with real actors, having mannerisms, they had motion capture for the first time, and then they had to go and give him a Caribbean accent. He's embarrassing. Yeah. People haven't done a full CG main character before. So like, how are we gonna do this guy? Well, we have a costume. Why don't we just replace his head? There's shots of the guy in the costume. It's really strange looking. I've never seen that before. He's got like cool shades Dude, on. I'm, I'm surprised how realistic his arms kind of look. I think they covered up his eyes. The actors didn't look at his eyes, they looked at the mask. I think you're absolutely right. Can yeah. you imagine like Jar Jar Binks is up here and the actor's like, yeah, how you doing? And he's like, why are you looking at his neck? <laughs> Ian McGregor's doing a good job looking him in the eyes. He's looking a little high right there. <laughs> when you have a guy in a costume, it's still human proportions. Like for example, our forearms are made a certain size so that we can touch our shoulders. If you want Jar Jar to have wonky proportions, you can't get that with a person in a costume. They end up just having the same proportions as a regular human being. And so they did a test. Um, Can you tell which one's which? No. So looking at the proportions of the arms now, mm -hmm. those look like real arms. Like, and this is digital. Well, like the movement is a much more cartoony in the second take. Yep. Because he does like this. Jar Jar like, Binks is just a straight up cartoon, and it kind of represents George Lucas no longer taking the world seriously. As far as like CG work goes, though, it's like so hard to do, especially back in 1999. So you guys might think that all these effect shots require millions of dollars and huge teams of advanced technicians, 
but that's not always the case. Look at this beautiful scene. Look at those super intense water simulations of the waterfall. You think those are super intense water simulations for the waterfalls? You think those took huge computers many, many months to calculate those incredible waterfalls? I have a feeling that it's not the case, but I'm gonna play along. <laughs> yes, I think there are simulations that took hundreds of hours. Guess what? These are waterfalls that you could create at home because all they're doing for these waterfalls is pouring salt. Salt? Also, salt down a black screen. That's so cool. So mm -hmm. you're getting the realistic motion of water, but because it's white, it's actually making it look like it's just like the really churned up uh, foam of a waterfall. That, yeah, that's the best kind of visual effects is when it's creative. Negotiations, what the lights say, but. <laughs> hair scene. <laughs> hair like a scene. bad idea of a okay. scene. <laughs> <laughs> On the big screen in the theater, it was rough. Look at these zooms. Ooh. Wait, are those are those digital zooms actually in the movie? I, yeah. Okay, watch this. Where? That's a CG pair. pair Check it out. Not, okay, this well, now floating it's CG pair. The right into her fork. Bloop, and then <laughs> <laughs> she like, sucks a chunk <laughs> off the pear into her mouth. Can you imagine trying to eat nothing? They'll do, like we'll, we'll make it look good later. And like all right. <laughs> it's so much better with that sound effect. I mean, look at that distortion through the actual vase yeah. of water there. That's, that's, that's pretty good. sweet. Some set designer decided to give everybody like glass plates and like glass vases. And I'm sure the VFX guy was just like, oh my God. They're dealing with green screen too. Yeah. It's just green screen city in the back or blue screen, whatever. It's probably blue screen. Look at this and you're, gonna, you're having to key that vase right there? Yeah, that's rough. Ooh. Dude, you can see a hint of the blue in the vase. It's so tough. That's tough. What man. a nightmare. Are there any more shots of these two hanging out, like maybe in a field? <laughs> <laughs> so this is like equivalent to like the Legolas elephant scene from Lord of the Rings. Look at those Frolicking clouds. in the field with the giant tick bugs. Dude, they're in for a storm <laughs> that night. That looks cool. Whoa, oh, whoa. Wow. Dude, look at these physics. <laughs> How is he standing on that thing? <laughs> and then this fall coming up right here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wow. Just, I do remember oh, thinking man. that was very wonky when I saw it for the first time. It's still so wonky. It's really, yeah. really wonky. Look at the way he does a backflip off that thing. You just like, they just lift him up and they rotate the blue screen element. <laughs> <laughs> like he's literally standing on the front of it as it's rocking around like a bull. They look like they're filled with blood, like giant ticks. They do. I guess they just eat a lot of grass. All four of its legs are up front, but all of its weight in the back. Technically the thing should just be, just be like butt scooting across the field like a dog. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, is this the Yoda fight? Of course it's the Yoda fight. It's when Yoda was fighting Saruman. And as what's as funny is it's, it's very similar to the Gandalf fight too, up in Isengard. Yeah, oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the only thing that is real that we've seen so far is Saruman here. His name's not Saruman. Christopher Lee. <laughs> when this happened in the theaters, I was blown away. Yeah, I This lost was it. the coolest moment yeah. of the entire movie for me. Christopher Lee is, he's just fighting the air. He's doing a great job of it. What a fantastic actor. An interesting thing to note is that Yoda's lightsaber casts light onto him, but Christopher Lee's lightsaber doesn't cast any light onto him. The reason you can see it on Yoda is because he's a 3D model and he has a 3D model lightsaber. So they can cast light from that 3D model lightsaber onto the 3D model. Right there, yeah, you yeah. see that? You can see it really well there, but they had to be careful because they can't cast any light on Christopher Lee, so they have to keep the light really subtle on Yoda so it doesn't stand out that Christopher Lee is just standing in blackness holding a red lightsaber. Lightsabers are done usually just by drawing it on the frame afterwards. So the person's just fighting with a stick, and then you can use something like After Effects or Photoshop or whatever. And you just draw basically a glowing laser. And the laser is actually just a white strip with a colored glow on the edges. But the thing is, because it's something that you just paint on afterwards, there's no lighting actually affecting the environment. Technically, a lightsaber should be super bright. It's bright white. It's blowing out the camera. They should be like blinding everybody. Dude, this was my favorite of the This mall. is such a good fight scene. Darth Maul is so sick. Favorite of the mall? Of the mall. What a move, what a tactical move. Dude, this whole fight, oh my god, I, I nearly lost it, man. This whole fight is so intense. I feel like the opinion of this movie kind of like evolves over time. People hate it, people love it, people hate it again, people love it again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you see that? <laughs> what? Look at that, you see the dimming of that lightsaber? Oh right yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, is that a masking issue? Is that like a keying it, issue? It's like, what? I don't. I don't know what's happening right there. Really strange. Man, it must just be a blending thing. Whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what Wait, was that? No, 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 no. He's just straight up holding like a toy lightsaber, it looks Hold like. On, it's you can gotta see be through it. You clip. can see through it. That's so weird. The the white level is brought down. What if it's just like an I think it is a color grading uh, thing, thing and they're just lowering the brightness of it, but you can't lower something that's 8 bit because the data's not there. It's been clipped. So you yeah. just lower it to like a gray. Yeah, it's definitely a color grading thing. Look at the key. <laughs> 
<laughs> it clips through. <gasps> oh clips my through. god! <laughs> what you're seeing there on the background is they filmed them on a blue screen and you got like individual hairs and folds of fabric and motion blur and all that kind of stuff. And some guy's sitting there being like, screw it, blur it, smooth it, send it out. If you ever feel bad about your keying, just know that this is a theatrical release right here. Now the thing is, no one cared because there's a sick ass fight scene happening at the penultimate moment in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, Ray. Wee. Oh, and then the movie Solo basically said that Darth Maul is still alive. Nothing like taking hard earned story points and just, sorry. I'm supposed to just react to visual effects. I'll keep it just to visual <laughs> effects. You know, I should mention that one of the reasons we're even reacting to these prequels right now is because of the comments that you guys left. If you want us to react to certain VFX shots that you couldn't figure out how they're done or you think they're just mind-blowingly awesome or whatever it is, please leave a comment. Don't hesitate. All right, that's yeah, enough. Back, I back, back to the reacting. So I remember being a big fan of this whole Final this Battle This sequence thing, was awesome. Yeah. I love this sequence. And this is all computer generated. Nothing in this shot right here is real. The background might be a model. Oh, bring it down. Bring it down, boys. Boof. This right here. Oh, that's cool. This right here was nuts, especially the first time seeing it in theaters. OK, this looks like something out of the newest trilogy, to be honest. So remember what I said earlier about the lightsabers usually being painted on? Yeah. Well, the same goes for lasers in the movie. They're, lasers and lightsabers are the exact same effect. But this is 100% CG, so they're able to have lights as part of the, the lasers moving through the scene. And so for the first time, you see the environment lit up from the lasers flying through. You see the soldiers getting lit up. You see the bad guys getting lit up. You see the silhouettes changing as lights move through it. And the way the dust <laughs> and dirt moves is yeah. extremely realistic. Check that out. Check that yeah. red light coming through the crowd there. It's secluded by the people in the foreground who haven't been hit by the light yet. Yeah, this is awesome. Up to this point, in terms of computer graphics, nothing like this had ever been done because you didn't have full battlefield scenes like this that were 100% CG, and you didn't have smoke that was 100% CG. You didn't have atmosphere that was 100% CG. So this is the first time all that came together in a shot. And you're seeing lasers here in a way that you have never seen lasers before in cinema. It is a bit jarring going from that awesome laser shot to this <laughs> with a thoughtful Yoda. Did you know that they didn't build a single clone trooper helmet for this entire Franchise. Really? Every single helmet was fake. The filmmakers at the time thought, okay, we can get away with doing this, we don't have to build that. And everyone reacted negatively to that because it, it, you could feel that it wasn't tangible. I mean, the reason this stuff looks fake is just the lighting simulation isn't up to yeah. stuff. Shadow from Yoda's hair on his head isn't quite there. The hair is mm -hmm. just kind of floating on there's, his head. There's like no shadow. The, the subsurface scattering on his ears. There's no grunge pass on the reflection on his chest plate. There's oh. no like yeah. fingerprints. Same for Yoda too. Like he just kind of seems like a toy here. And the ambient light is very, very flat. That's something that I think most people don't really appreciate has been developed a lot over the last couple decades is rendering of light. Another thing that they did in these movies, they had these super chromed out spaceships. They wanted to show off all the really cool reflections. Whoa. Hi. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Wait, go that guy. He wasn't even tracked in. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Look at the background. The whole shot's retimed. There is retiming artifacts there. Look at that, right there. Look at the right side there, That whatever that little black stick coming out of like that panel is. Now if you go forwards a frame, See how it, there's double imaging, and you yep. go forwards a frame again, mm -hmm. and now it's back to a single image, and you go forwards again, double image. So I think what's happening here is the guy falling is going too slow. They need to retime it so he hits the ground faster. But they didn't record it in slow motion. So what they're basically doing is creating a morph for those extra frames that don't exist. But you're getting artifacts because of that. Arguably, we're just catching it because we're being really scrutinizing. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Look at that guy. You can see inside of his head, so obviously there's not a human head inside of that robot. It's not a costume. But now he's walking around the scene. It looks pretty good. It moves really nicely. Do you think they yeah. computer generated C-3PO here? No. Do you think that's a 3D model? It is not a 3D is No, it? no, that's You're way right. too... You know why? Because it looks so good. Do you know what they did? He's a puppet. And there's an actual person attached to the back of him operating him. No Really? Way. So he's just like, I'm doing this, but like the sticks are coming off me and moving the guy in front of me? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's smart. Awesome. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And you can actually see in the final shot here, they have to do a light wrap around him. That fuzzy, like, bloomed out highlight around his shoulder is because there's a person occluding the background in that shot that they had to remove mm. and then add him back into that shot. So actually, the whole background is probably a separately filmed clean plate. What? That's not Star Wars. These guys have been hard at work. Oh my god, me and Ren have been cranking really hard on this. Have you ever wanted to see? 
the Boston Dynamics robots turn on the scientists? Well, that's, that's kind of what we did using motion capture technology, fully CG characters. We would love if you guys went and checked it out on youtube.com slash corridor digital. We're very proud of it. And there's actually a crew video on this channel that you can check out kind of detailing all the hard work we put into it and all the pain we suffered to get there. If you guys have any movies or TV shows that you're like, well, how do they do those VFX? So type out a little comment. Also, if you are not subscribed, to the Corridor Crew channel. Well, what the heck are you waiting for? And here's a hint for what's gonna be in our next video. I don't know, you'll have to find out. <laughs>